I've been thinking quite a bit about thermostats recently, partly because I've been thinking about mind and thinking and beliefs and uh, my latest concerns for this stuff I'm doing on the other channel. Uh, and either because of the actions of the library angel or just because of coincidence or whatever, I do seem to have, have bumped into information about thermostats quite a bit in relation to those things, do with thinking and thought and so on. Uh, David Chalmers has got some material on thermostats uh, on his site and John, uh, John Searle refers to thermostats or sites, other people talking about thermostats I should say, in some of his uh, writings on artificial intelligence. And they are fascinating things. I think there is a lot to be said about thermostats. I mean certainly um, a thermostat that operates a heating system in a room, if you include the heating system and the, in, and the room itself, that whole that whole system is, well, as far as I can see, it's the simplest example, at least, of a uh, of a homeostatic system, of a self-regulating homeostatic system, uh, a kind of cybernetic, autopoetic system, in which the uh, see, I can't even use a word like intelligence here, really, but in which the the actions that take place in that system have fulfil all of those functions to do with monitoring and control and activation. A response, that whole, that whole collection of activities that you find within uh, um, much more complex homeostatic systems like bodies for example are present within that, within the, the little loop of thermostat, uh, thermostat heater and, uh, and, and room in which these things are, are situated. But one of the things I've been thinking about in relation to that is what is the status of the thermostat itself? And here I'm just talking about simple bimetallic strip thermostats that just turn switches on and off when the room gets to a certain temperature. Uh, so when I think about that, I, I kind of um, imagine the thermostat as being the, uh, the kind of sensory motor end of it, the sensory motor part of that system, that the rest of the, the system is doing, the rest of the, the, the room and the heater and the, the air in the room, uh, the various physical laws which keep these things in place in the room, the various chemical structures of the component parts of this system, all that kind of stuff I imagine is kind of background and the thermostat as being, if you like, the kind of smartest thing in the room really because it has this uh, sensory motor capacity. The, the biometallic strip part of it acts as a, sens as a sensor so if something changes in that strip under the influence of external conditions and as a result of that change a switch is thrown which turns the heater off and subsequently affects those, those environmental conditions. So the, the, the thermostat itself is, is at the heart of the sensory motor system, at least that's how I imagine it. But thinking again, I'm not sure if that's even true. Uh, I mean I think there's something, there's a couple of really interesting things about that whole system. Uh, And that's, and that's, which I think, no, I can't really get to what I want to say with that really. But I suppose all I'm thinking is that the, the, the sensory motor actions that the thermostat most clearly represents is only one of a whole series of actions, any of which could be considered sensory motor if we placed our attention on them. So the, the heating system, uh, when it's actuated, is in a kind of... Um, an engaged relationship with the molecules of the air, for example, around it. It heats the air up. That's, that's kind of what's happening. And that subsequently goes on to, to heat up the metal in the bimetallic strip and, and trigger the switch. But, uh, but the relationship between the heating unit and the air is also, it seems to me, one of, um, of action and response. You know, the, the air in the room, it seems to me, is, as, is acting as, as a sensor every bit as much as the bimetallic strip in the thermostat. And not only is it acting as a sensor, it's also an actuator. Whilst the thermostat might trigger a switch, and that's a really obvious thing to see, the, the air in the room is also actuating something as a response to its being, uh, to its being affected by the heat. It's conducting, it's, it's, the air in the room is conducting its own heat into the metal of the thermostat, the bimetallic strip of the thermostat. So there is a, absolutely a physical exchange going on, which is a response to the um, to the change that have gone on in the in the 
molecules of, of air in the room. Uh, and I think you can trace that right the way through. So the fact that we're isolated, at least myself, I tend to, is to identify the bimetallic strip and the thermostat. And the whole little bit, so the bimetallic strip connected to a switch in the thermostat as the sensory motor system. I think it's, uh, I'm not sure that's really true. I think I could focus on any part of that system and find some kind of, not really stimulus response, but some kind of actuation and reaction response. Um, a discontinuity, if you like, in that system, in which some kind of activity could provoke some other kind of different activity uh, in every bit of sensory motor away as the thermostat is. You know, the heat is, is part of a, is a, is a is that, in that sense, is a sensor. The air in the room is a sensor. The individual molecules of, of copper and some other metal in the biometallic strip are sensors. And the whole thing is. Uh, yeah, the whole thing, I think, is, is, a, is a kind of chain of, of, of sensory and motor connections. Yeah, I'm not sure that's true, actually.